Okay. Let's see. Our final question this week is on chicharrones. Cha cha cha. <laughs> From Isaac. Uh, hey Rob, chicharrones, pork rinds, are they a healthy snack? I've heard you indirectly mention them on the podcast some time ago, but I wasn't able to infer whether your opinion is favorable or cautionary. I'm an ultra runner, and during peak training season, we'll spend about 20 hours per week running. In the bad old days, I would top off my calories with a gigantic bowl of cold cereal in the evening or an enormous serving of lentils and rice. But then I got woke, started monitoring my blood sugar, and started looking for low-carb options to fuel. I'm already having two salads each day, huge amounts of veggies, and as much meat as I can stomach. So I'm just looking for some calories to fuel the movement. So are pork rinds okay? I avoid the flavored variety. The bags I buy just say fried pork skin on the ingredients list, and I dip them in sour cream. The best part is how easy it is to get an extra thousand calories and the flavor. Am I headed towards clogged artery arteries or are pork rinds actually healthy in the way that bacon is healthy? Thanks. Love the show, Isaac. Uh, he says, after submitting my question about whether pork rinds are an acceptable snack, I realized that Rob's answer might be we'd need to see your lab work. Um, so then he has his cholesterol. Oh, that's doing He's some that diligence. Kind of um, we don't have an allele. Oh, do we? No, we have lipoprotein, ApoB. That looks, oh, he does, he does. Uh, LDL particle is 1149. That looks phenomenal. Quick triglyceride HDL ratio. Looks great. Um, see, reactive protein is tiny. Okay, cool. And those numbers we'll put in the show notes. So uh, this is one of these funny things. So like uh, Rhonda Patrick, who I, I think is great, but like uh, pork rinds have been one of the things that she's just like gone after. She's like, oh, she's still unhealthy. You know, there's no nutritional value there, which I mean, there's not a lot of vitamins. There's probably not a lot of minerals particularly, but it is a really interesting source of collagen. And when you're in this kind of lower carb, unprocessed food world, there's not much that's crunchy. Like mm -hmm. you, you, you'll grab a piece of ice just to be like, oh yeah, I want some sort of a crunch. Like we'll do some jicama thin sliced every once in a while, but you just kinda, you miss that crunch and uh, chicharrones are, are phenomenal for that. Uh, I Typically they're cooked in pork fat. I guess you could make the case that maybe some of that stuff is producing some oxidized cholesterol. But I was just reading some stuff recently that uh, people in ketosis, um, their their liver preferentially identifies um, lipoproteins with oxidized cholesterol and removes them from the system. So they're seen. So it, it, it's kind of an interesting story where even though cholesterol levels, possibly even lipoprotein levels, may go up under a ketogenic or low carb diet, your body also seems to be more savvy about removing the offending particles that appear to be the most problematic. So. It's kind of like, you know, is that a wash? Is it a net win, a net loss? Um, with the option of always modifying my position in the future, I would say in general, I can't really see pork rinds in the context of like a keto carnivore type diet being the least bit problematic. The cool thing here is that Isaac has done the diligence of doing some good blood work that actually answers some questions, even just glancing at it. It's kind of like, okay, we're pretty good to go. We don't have any type of wacky discordance. We don't have hidden insulin resistance. There's a few other things we could take a peek at if we wanted to, but from reading between the lines, it sounds like he's looking, feeling, performing well, but it's just kind of curious about like, hey, is this one thing that I'm throwing down the pie hole gonna, gonna crush me? So I would just repeat this blood work probably once a year or something like that to just uh, use as a baseline. Maybe at some point, additionally, doing a, um, a coronary calcium, just so you've got that in your back pocket, and we can use that again as a, a baseline. A CIMT can be um, handy also, but uh, it takes a very skilled practitioner to do the CIMT well. So those are a little bit of a mixed bag, and they're a little more variable than the uh, coronary calcium. But beyond that, it seems good. And, uh, uh, you know, I will make a plug for the epic, epic pork, pork rinds, rinds. Yep. It, it, they have a barbecue flavor a sea salt and vinegar and salt and pepper salt and pepper really good yeah and the barbecue one like the kids mm -hmm. it, it it literally they can have evolve a baked one too yeah they do have a baked like one which i i like less honestly i like the ones that are fried in mm -hmm. pork fat but the, either one of the flavors but mainly the barbecue flavor will 
provoke the girls into a fist fight, practically, as they get down to the bottom of the bag. Which I don't know if that's good or bad, but um, they're good. They're, the dog they're, likes they're them tasty. Too. The dog definitely likes them too. <laughs> the bag comes out and he hears it and he's like right there sitting, yep. pleading. So Isaac, uh, good question and good on you for doing some, some diligence on your blood work. It, it's incredibly frustrating when people spend time and money to go get an assessment that answers nothing. And this is another area that we're going to be uh, dipping our toes into to help people make better decisions around the the lab work that they're choosing, why they're choosing it. So keep your eyes open for that too. Sense of it and making sense it. of it. Yeah, because I literally 90% of the time, 95% of the time, people do blood work and they're more confused by what is ordered than, than otherwise. And it's because it's just not enough to really make a, mm -hmm. a definitive call in general. All right, that was our last question for the week. Thanks everyone. Uh, as usual, if you have questions, you can submit those at robwolf.com on the contact page. What else? Most of my online activity currently is over at Instagram mm -hmm. at Das Rob Wolf. D-A-S-R-O-B-B-W-O-L-F. That's it. So thanks for the awesome questions. Yeah. You guys are fantastic. And, and we'll be back next week. We'll be back next week. We may be a little bit hit and miss between now and August, mid-August, because yeah. we're going to be moving and stuff like that. We're going to try to bank some of these so that we stay ahead of stuff. It's possible that life may just grab us by the short hair so and demand that that doesn't happen. But we will do our best to stay on top of this. Yeah. So, yep. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.